Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about TypeScript. So if you want to be a full stack developer, you have to learn TypeScript. I will highly recommend TypeScript because it is one of the modern technology that most of the full stack developer are using. TypeScript is very useful. You can use it in front end or even back end. Well, let's get started. Before even starting uh, this lecture, I think first of all, I need to mention if you don't have JavaScript knowledge, then you should not start learning TypeScript. It will be very tough for you. So first thing you need to learn at least basic JavaScript in order to learn TypeScript. So I will start with the introduction or that means introduction to TypeScript, what you need to learn about TypeScript before even you are going to jump further. First of all, you need to know what is TypeScript and why do you need to learn TypeScript? And I will also show a demo of TypeScript program. So let's get started. What is TypeScript? If I say TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, maybe it's clear to you. That means you need to know JavaScript and you have to add additional thing with JavaScript in order to make TypeScript program. So if I just break into few pieces, then probably you'll understand the word TypeScript, we can divide it into two parts. One is type, another one is script. If you look at this slide, type uh, refers to here data type and script refers to here JavaScript. That means JavaScript with additional data type is building TypeScript. So we can say something like this type script is basically JavaScript with some additional data types such as enum, tuple, et cetera, that you will be learning later on. So TypeScript basically is JavaScript, but with some additional data type, that's what you need to know at this point. And here is some extra information for, me, for you. Uh, basically, it's maintained and developed by Microsoft in 2012. Well, let's get a program, an example here so that you get, you get a clear understanding about TypeScript and why do you need TypeScript. So first of all, here without TypeScript, a pure JavaScript program here, you can see we are defining two variable let number one, let number two, and then we are assigning some values here. And finally, we are concatenating or adding two variables here. So if you run this program, it will run perfectly and you will get results something like this. So probably you didn't expect something like this. The reason behind this, you uh, define two variables, number one and number two, probably you wanted to hold two integer variables, integer value or number values. But here we assign a string value to number two and it didn't like give any warning and it should not give any warning because in JavaScript, we use dynamic types. That means when you assign some values to a variables, it just get that uh, data type as a dynamic type. So here we assign string to number two. So it will think that this variable is string data type. So the problem is here, we define those two variables. The reason we defined, we wanted to store two number type values, but here we assign a string and it didn't give any warning before even running. So we just run the program and then we come up with something like unusual output that we didn't even expect it. So here is the problem, you know, the user can give any sort of values or even the programmer can assign any sort of values to these number one and number two variables. So here TypeScript will come to play. As you can see, the difference between these two programs, basically we are saying let number one is type number. So this number one, we are assigning an extra type here saying it's type number and also same for number two. Now, when you assign number one value is uh, number 20, that's perfect. But when you will try to assign some string value to number two, which we already said, it's going to be a number type variable. Here you'll get warning. Even before you're running this program, it, uh, when you're writing this program, you will see this error. And this is why TypeScript is very important. So you are checking the types of the variables here and it will save you time for sure. So now you understand the difference between TypeScript and without TypeScript writing the programs. So now from this example, we can see that TypeScript add static typing. So when you write TypeScript program, you add some static typing, just like this. We are saying number one is data type number, number two's data type is number. So we are adding static typing to JavaScript, fine. 
then why should we use JavaScript, the TypeScript? Probably you have already get this idea, but I will uh, use this example once more to explain why do we need TypeScript. So let's see. So when we wanted to run this program, we can see that it's give us some warning and this warning will help us to debug our code even before running this program. Now we can see this, this is a warning and it will say that you cannot assign string to a type of number variable. So it will give you a warning and that, that this will help you. So later on, you don't need to find out what, what happened wrong in your program. So let's say you are writing thousands line program. It will save your time. You don't have to look after what went wrong because it will give you a, an error, you know, when you, even you are writing the program. So easy to debug the code and then increase the readability and code quality. Because if you see this program, you can see this number one type variable will be able to handle only number type values. And number two variable will be able to handle number, number type values. So you know what these variables are for and what kind of data they are going to use and handle. So it increased the readability and also the code quality. Fine, and the most important thing, you can use TypeScript uh, because it's a JavaScript library. So you can use it with React, you can use it Angular, it doesn't have any problem. And the most important and cool thing that I already mentioned, you can use it on client side and also in server side. So it's kind of full stack thing that you need to learn. And the most cool thing I will say, it will help you with the code completion. So let's say you define number one, number two variables. And when you put a dot after number one dot something, so you wanted to write a method, it will give you some automatic completion things that those methods are only available for number type. Let's say you uh, define a username and that type is string. So when you say username dot, it will give you those methods name only that are like relevant to a string. So I said the reason uh, why I like TypeScript a lot because it's give you like auto completion things and also like code hinting that you uh, look uh, like later on when I'll go for practical things. Right now, you, I'm just trying to give you theoretical understanding and then we'll move to the Visual Studio Code and we'll see how does it help, okay? So here uh, the demo comes, the final demo, okay? And let's write with like our normal JavaScript, what we're doing here. We are just assigning, we're just writing a function. Function name is add numbers. It's taking two input as a parameter number one, number two, and finally, we are just doing the sum of these numbers and printing it, okay? This program looks fine, okay? And if we give two values to this add numbers function, 20, 30, it will give us out uh, output as 50, that's perfect. But what about this? If we give like 20 as a number and 30 as a string, does it like, uh, is there any problem for this program? Definitely not. And it will give us a funny output 20, 30, as it's supposed to do. But the problem is we don't have any errors here still, even though we are running and also getting output, but we didn't expect like output something like this. And here TypeScript comes again, as I said, we can use a function like this function add numbers, and we can assign data type with parameters, you know, so the parameters, you know, number one is data type with number, number two parameter have data type number. So now we are adding number type with those parameters. Now the fun comes here. When you will write add numbers 20, 30, it will work perfect. But when you will write add numbers 20, 30, then this time it will not work because you said number one will be able to handle number type and number two will be able to handle number type, but you are assigning string here. So before even running this program, it will give you an output. It will give a warning. It will say error here, you know, something like this. So now I, I do understand that you have realized the need of TypeScript. So it should be uh, interesting to you. Now let's move on to like environment setup, how we can set up the environment for TypeScript. So now uh, we are just thinking about JavaScript and in JavaScript, we are trying to like set up our TypeScript. We are not using it with React. So just basic setup here. First of all, you will need to uh, understand here what you need. We need node setup. So you must download and install node and you can check whether you have node install or not. So node hyphen hyphen version. And for the text editor, you can use BS code, which is very popular for sure. Now, how do you install TypeScript? For globally, you can install like this npm install 
hyphen g and TypeScript. But for local project, you can do npm install, save that TypeScript. And then later on, you can check whether your TypeScript is installed or not, just saying tsc hyphen hyphen version, perfect. So after downloading and installing these things, now it's better to look at how type, TypeScript actually works. So let's say you have write a program and the program extension is TS. So look at this extension needs to be TS, which means TypeScript. And here in example of TypeScript, we are saying let number one data type number, and then we are assigning a number value to that number variables. And finally, outputting the uh, variables here. So what does TypeScript compiler does here? You know, TSC means TypeScript compiler. It compile this TypeScript program and then convert into a JavaScript program that you are used to with. And then how do you run this program? We normally say node index.js, but look at this. We have written this program something like this, let number one and data type number, but the output which we are getting after TypeScript compiling in index.js, it's saying var number one. So no matter how you write your TypeScript program, it will always convert into a JavaScript program. And that uh, conversion is done by TypeScript compiler, okay? So let's get started here. Let's run our first TypeScript program and it's basically theoretically here and definitely we'll do it practically, but just let's get the idea. So if you write a program and the file name is index.ts, You'll write this program. First of all, you need to compile. Remember this, first of all, you need to compile. And after compiling, we'll get this index.js file. And then we can run it like node index.js if we are using just JavaScript. So how do you compile it? You, you have to just use this command tsc and this index.ts file. Then it will compile. And finally, we can run like node index.js. But if you really don't want to compile every time after changing your file, then you can use tsc index.ts and add this flag hyphen hyphen watch. So you don't need to like, after changing every time, you don't need to compile it. It will like automatically compile. And then just you need to run this program like node index.js or whatever the file name is, okay? Okay, now we have understand that TypeScript is basically JavaScript and also some additional data types. So it's very important here, JavaScript with data types. Now we need to know what are those data types available in TypeScript. I will start with built-in data types, then I'll move on to those user-defined data types. So here you can see some of the important data type I have mentioned, built-in data type and user-defined data type. First, I will start with built-in data type. We have string, number, boolean, undefined, null, void, any. So most of these data type, maybe you are already familiar, you have worked with those data type. Now I will start with string, okay? So very straightforward. We're saying username is a string data type. You can see this. Now this username variable can only hold string values, not any other values. So you can see this example we are putting a string to this username and it is perfectly valid. We can uh, define something like this, let user address. You, if you look at this example, then we are saying Bangladesh. So we are straightforward assigning this value. We are not saying the type of this variable. And here TypeScript, what will do, it will infer it as string automatically. So TypeScript will work here by itself. So if you say let name equal something, TypeScript will infer that type automatically. So type, TypeScript will look at this value, uh, it finds as a string. So TypeScript will think that user address is the, the type of string. So I think you have understand how TypeScript infer it automatically. So now you can like print or do whatever. So the code completion comes here. When you say username dot, then you will see only those methods or function which is relevant to string only because you said username is string. So that's why TypeScript is very important here, okay? And then move on to the next data type, uh, which is number, which already like I introduced earlier. So now we can see that uh, we can say that user ID as a number and we can only assign number to these variables, not any other things. So user ID 101 is perfect for this example. 
Okay, let's move on to Boolean. It's very straightforward as well. We can say, let user is registered, a variable name, and then we can assign Boolean data type. So we can assign Boolean value like true, false, but not any other type of values, okay? And then we can print whatever. And finally, here the void built-in type. So we have uh, declared some variables here, username, user ID, user is registered, and we have assigned some values here. Now we can print those values with a function and you can see that function name here, it's saying display user info. And the function is not returning anything, it's just printing some values. That's why we said here, you can say colon and then void. So this function is not going to return anything and that's why we said void. Void means something, not anything, it's like empty. Okay, fine. And the final one of this built-in time probably is any type. So if you are not sure about a variable's type, then in this case, you can use any type. Here in example, you can say uh, like you, if you don't know that what kinds of uh, input values user will give, so you can say let password of any type or any type of array, okay? So far so good, we have covered built-in data types. Now we'll move on to user defined data types. Data types here that we already cover for uh, from built-in, you can see string, number, boolean, void, any. Now move on to this user defined type and first we'll start with union type. So how does union work? So if you want to use more than one type for a variable, then you can use union type. Let's say user ID can be string or number. So that's why we have used this union symbol or or symbol most of the time we say, so string or number. So user ID now can take string or number. So if you assign number, that's perfect. No error here. If you assign string, no error here. But if you assign true or false or something other like that, then definitely it's not going to be valid because we said, user ID can handle only string or number type of values, that's all. So now you know how to use union type. So if you need to declare like more than one types for a variables, then you can use union. You can even say something like this, let username can be Tom or Jerry. Now we can assign values for username only Tom or Jerry, but not any other things. Here I'm saying username is Anis, which is invalid, but here in the second line, I'm saying username is Tom, which is perfectly valid because we said username type can be Tom or Jerry, nothing then other than that. Okay, so I think union is clear, but finally here, I want to give one more example for a function. So for a function parameter, we can use string or number, something like this, we can union. So we can say string, number, Boolean, whatever. So we can combine more types with the union. I think you have understand how does it work. Okay, so we have covered union type from the user defined section. Let's go for the second one, which one is array. We already know how does array work. Array basically works with similar type of values. So collection of similar type of values. Here you can see a let users, Tom, Jerry, Milton. That's perfect. You can say something like this in TypeScript and in TypeScript, it will automatically think uh, as a string array. It will consider as a string array. You remember TypeScript does automatically inference. So it will consider this one as a string array. Or even you can say something like this, let users string array, which is perfect for these types. Or you can also say something like this, area of string. So this three years valid declaration, okay? And then we can like print this uh, array, whatever. So that's not the case. I just wanted to introduce array type for the type scripts. And also we can use multi-types for array. Even I said like we can use a single type of collections, but in TypeScript, we can use union. You remember here, if you look at this example, we are saying this users is a combination of number or string type of array. That's it. And you can see we have assigned the value of number and string, but nothing other, uh, and other than that. You cannot use Boolean values here because you said it can be number or string type of array. Okay, then move on to the next one, tuple, which one is, is very straightforward. It can uh, works with mixed data type or mixed values. 
we can use like key value pair here. As you can see, I'm saying let users and number and comma string. So we can use number and string, this pair you can see here, number string. So if we print users zero, it will print the first index value, which is 101. If we print users one index, which is like this string, it will print this string. And then we can push it to the uh, uh, array. So the uh, important things is in tuple, we can use key build like uh, mix up data types. Okay. And then the most important one, and I use the most, uh, most of the time, which is enum. Enum is just like uh, in Java and C Sharp, we have used enum. So it, uh, it is also available in TypeScript. It helps us to store constant. So if you are working or dealing with constant, then enum is your first choice, I guess. It doesn't allow any duplicate data. And we can use a numeric enum. We can use string type enum. We can even combine this numeric and string, which is heterogeneous enum. So let's see some example of number and string type of enum. Here you can see we are saying enum. So if you want to declare an enum, you have to start with enum keyword and the enum name. So I'm saying here user request and then start with second bracket, close with second bracket. And here I'm saying read data, save data, update data. So by default, when you'll try to access this user request dot read data, it will return the first one is one, then second one is below two, third one below is three. So it will goes like this one, two, three. So this one is the numeric one, but for string, we can like assign something like this, read data equal read data, save data equal save data, update data equal update data. So if you are dealing with like lots of constant, then you can use enum like this. So it will save your time. And if you want to write code, uh, you, you won't face any typos in your program. And if you want to like access enum, as I said, you have to use dot operator. So when you are saying user request dot read data, it will basically return this string. I hope I was able to understand you, I will able to explain you this thing. And finally, this heterogeneous, which one is the combination of string and number. As you can see here, I'm using string and here I'm using number. So this is an exa example of heterogeneous enum. So hopefully I was able to explain you those things. Now we can move, up, move forward to object and custom type. And then we can jump to Visual Studio Code and look at these things, how it works practically. And we can build a program.